That's how, if I did the intro, that's how it would be. Hey guys, welcome to Nerd United. This is the Nerd United Fireside Chat on mm. NPR. All right, let's get started. We're Nerd United. Uh, I'm the co-host of the year named Mike. Uh, he's the actual original host, the OG host. Uh, his name's Greg. Um, there's other people here, but they're not on the podcast, so I'm not going to name them. They're upstairs watching Casper. The friendly ghost? The only one. Well, that could be Casper the evil ghost. I don't think so. Casper the sort of dumb ghost. That's pretty much Casper. He's dumb. Why? Not all nice people are dumb, Mike. No. Prove me wrong. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so Casper, um, the cartoon Casper, or is it... The uh, Christina Ricci, Devin Sawa? Yeah. Yeah. Devin Sawa for you. Bill Pullman. Um, the poor man's Bill Paxton. Or is it the rich man's yeah, Bill Paxton? Yeah, either Bill? way, either way. Is Bill Pullman still alive? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, we don't get political, but I guess he recently came out because uh, our, our POTUS uh, uh, repurposed the Independence Day speech that Bill Pullman oh, gives. Oh, really? And he came out and he's like, don't, don't do yeah, that. Yeah, no. <laughs> Which, never mind. Okay. Uh, so, we were just talking before we started rolling a video that, I don't know if you can tell us or not, old Greggy shaved. Usually I shave on Saturday nights or Sunday mornings for church. Okay. Uh, usually we record this on Friday nights, but last night, old Pops couldn't uh, keep his eyes open on the couch. And I'm like, my guy, I, I, I quit this tomorrow. I'm very <laughs> sleepy. And Mike's like, no, I'm not surprised you're old. By the way, um, okay, never mind. I was looking at the levels for the microphone, mm -hmm. and mine seemed fine. Yours seemed like they weren't. That's all right. I'm going to bump, bump it up anyway. Okay. Just pump up the volume, pump up the volume, pump up the volume. Speaking of shaving, I have not shaved. <laughs> mm. We were talking about that. Um, and you said maybe the end of this month? Yeah, probably end of June. Give them, you know, a little more time. What I really want. Are I'm, you going to shave it or are you just going to trim it No, back? trim it, trim it. Yeah. Make it look respectable? Yeah. Yeah. It'll probably be as short as what you have. Yours. That's, yeah. That's a good. Yeah. So I don't, I don't mind. First of all, you look dashing. Thank no you. matter what. Thank you. I just don't know. So last year this time I had a beard mm -hmm. for the blues. Playoff uh, beard. Playoff. Yeah. Um, and I'm so thankful that they won. I think I kept the beard one more day. Okay. And then I shaved because my face felt so it felt so good to breathe. My yeah. face needed to air. Yeah, there's there's um, some downfalls to having a beard. There's a lot of upsides. I almost said upfalls. I mean that wasn't right. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of upsides to having it too. Like like, else, up, like up dog. Yes, exactly. Just like up dog. Yeah. You were supposed to. Never mind. I, I know what I'm supposed to say, and that's why I didn't say it. Um. So but, smart. Yeah. Did I ever tell you how smart my son is? I mean, I, I assumed he was. Did I ever tell you the uh, stick out your tongue, touch your nose trick that he that I told him? Uh -huh. So my son is four and a half now, and this happened February, March. So okay. He was even younger because that's how time works. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to mess with him. I said, "Hey, uh, can you stick out your nose?" Or he stick out your tongue. <laughs> he really <laughs> confused him then. I said, "Can you stick out your tongue and touch your nose?" And I thought. Like a four-year-old, he would go, no. My four-year-old goes <laughs> right away, like did not hesitate. Yeah. And I said, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Smart kid. And then I told my wife about that, and she she agreed. She's like, yeah, we're screwed. Because <laughs> if he's doing that at four, imagine what he's going to do at 14. Exactly, yeah. So uh, pray for us if, if that's your thing. Yes, yeah, whatever your thing is. Whatever your thing. Yeah, it's your uh, thing, not ours. Thoughts and prayers. Yes. Or prayers and thoughts. Or karate. Whatever. I don't I don't know. So, um the face needs to breathe. Okay. I or, don't I, I don't know how Mine mine doesn't. Mine mine I mean mine gets sweaty, but that's just because I'm fat. So <laughs> how, when was the last time seriously, when was the last time you like were clean shaven? Uh okay. It was probably honestly like five years ago maybe. Because and I have a picture of it. Which I was a lot skinnier back then too, though. Um, we all. But I, uh, I think I, uh, it was either I had already graduated or I was getting ready to graduate, something along that. 
And I had an interview in Flora, Illinois, I believe. I've been there. Yes. That's through all been through there. You yeah, don't really I, stop in Flora. No, I, th- I think it was. Driving. I think it was Flora. It was for some kind of health department or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, anyway, so the morning of, I was trimming down my beard, you know, and I got about halfway, and my clippers broke. Ooh. And I didn't have time to run to the store to get a new pair. I don't even know if I had money to get a new pair at the time. So I had no other option but to just completely yeah. shave it all. Because that's the only way. Because it was just patchy, mm-hmm. if not. So You didn't want to go to the interview all patchy? No. You'd got the, I, you, they would have given you the job because they would have thought that you know it was your first job ever. I mean, well, and, and your nickname could have been Patchy. Well, clearly, I didn't get the job, probably because of not having a beard. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah, like uh, some some guys have power ties. Mike has the power beard. Yeah, it's yeah, and you, you wouldn't. I don't think you'd recognize me if I didn't have a beard. Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> years ago, and this was uh, when my wife and I were first dating. It was in that first, you know, twelve year or twelve months. <laughs> That first 12 years is, I think, just, just a lapse. Yeah. Right? Uh, the first 12 months, first year, uh, I was trying to, at that point, like when she met me, I just had just a little bit of, of here, right here. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, when you do when you're in your 20s. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to shave it back, even it up. Right. And you take a little too much, so then you balance it. Yeah, and, yeah. Yep. And next thing you know, you're like, screw it. Whole thing's gone. Mm-hmm. And I remember she looked at me like she had never seen me before and she's like don't don't shave it all and yeah. i realized i still have two chins and this kind of hides the second one why do you think i have a beard man that's <laughs> one of the big reasons to do one is that also why you don't shave your chest and stomach and body hair uh, it would take me too long i'll trim <laughs> to, to keep the illusion that it's all it's just six yeah. packs underneath there yeah, I'll, I'll I'll trim this, but if I if I, I actually had a girl one time that wanted me to shave uh, my chin, I'm like, that should take forever. Be like, why don't you do it, lady? Yeah, she's like, I do. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Um, she, she shaved her chest. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we have uh, some some surprising news. Yes, well, it's not surprising for me. Are we talking about my news? Or no, my news. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yes. Oh yes, yes. A- and we do have some sad news. That well, yeah. we'll figure it. Uh, so the surprising news today: my wife got a haircut for the first time in six to eight, uh, ten or twelve, maybe more months. Okay, so we're gonna say years. <laughs> no, not this time. Okay, because uh, I'm pretty sure if it'd been twelve years since her haircut, she'd been walking on it. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it was down. You can't see this viewer, but it was down middle middle back middle back. Yeah. And so she came back uh, very lovely. She, you know, she's gorgeous anyway. I'll kick my coverage. Um, but while she was gone, I said, I'm going to go ahead and get the grill ready. And Mike knows the end of the story, yeah. but he doesn't know, know. The mm-hmm. and, and if you, you're not old, well, you know, you know, you might know who Paul Harvey is. He's a long time broadcaster, conservative radio, but I had, I had to listen to him when I was in conservative stations, but he always had the rest of the story. Very deep and right, authoritative right. voice. Anyway, um, so you know the end, but you know the rest yeah. of the story. So she's gone, and I'm preparing the pork. We have pork chops and uh, country-style ribs to put on the grill. And I had started the gas grill, and as I always do, you know, let it preheat, you know, come out, you know, clean it up, scrape it, everything else. Uh, and when I went to do that, I also I usually turn the heat down on it, get it where I like it. I realized that the knobs which are on the outside of the grill, and this is important. The knobs, plastic knobs, were melting onto the deck. There was a pile of burning plastic that had dripped down on the deck. Wow. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't turn it off because I tried to turn the knobs. Plastic is melted. And yeah. So I had, I'm like, shit. Have to run into the garage, get, you know, something to tur- turn off the gas. And, of course, I'm stupid, so I'm, on the deck, I'm on the, gr- I'm at the grill. I'm blowing out the fire what I can, right. especially the exterior flames. But I can't do anything to turn off the gas. Run in, find a tool, turn it off, uh, give it a few minutes, cuss a lot, unhook the gas line. Cause I didn't want to do that while there was still gas. Yeah, in. yeah. I didn't think that was wise. Uh, so then I had to get the charcoal grill out, which I haven't used 
all year. Had to. We still had the pork. We still had dinner. It looks delicious on, on Facebook. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but the gas grill, which I had said to my wife, by the way, it came with the house, which I don't think that usually happens. No. Uh, I guess because the previous owners moved to Florida, they didn't want to take it with them. Yeah. Or maybe they knew what they were leaving behind. Right, right. <laughs> I'm happy we got almost four years out of it. Don't get me wrong. That's good. Um, and I said to my wife, I said, one side shelf is already leaning. At a, like You can't use it. You can't right. put any weight on it. Uh, I said, I don't really feel safe using that part. I said, and it's pretty, you know, it's showing its age. We had hopes of replacing it maybe after this year. Well. Now, I said, honey, we might have to replace that sooner or just use the gas grill. She's like, just, you know, keep using the gas grill and maybe start pricing. Or, I mean, keep the charcoal, charcoal grill. grill. Charcoal you, can, grill. You, can keep, uh, you know, start pricing the other ones. I said, okay, I know where those are going. Yeah. So, uh, we're all okay. No damage, no structural damage. No. But when I came out and saw melting plastic, plastic yeah. fire coming outside, I said, this is bad. Yeah. And it delayed dinner by like an hour and a half. And that was also unfortunate. Yeah. That's not good. All right, Mike, you got to really sadden us now. I don't know. I don't know it's really sad. I mean, I guess kind of, I don't know, whatever. So anyway, I don't I feel like I'm, I'm just like talking to you, but I'm really talking to you, but you know the story already. I do. Um, I I know the rest of the story. Yes, you know the whole you know the whole story. Um, I will no longer be a Belleville uh, resident. As a, I mean, I've, okay, so technically, I, I officially have my apartment, my old apartment, until the end of July because my lease, which my landlord for some reason won't let me get out of the lease. I'll tell that story too. Uh, I might tell that on the podcast because okay. we're already going like thirteen minutes. Um, yeah, so I, I'm moving uh, to elsewhere. To elsewhere, yeah. I don't know if you want. No, to I'll say I'll just say I'm moving elsewhere. I'll probably eventually say it on the podcast, just because I say everything on the podcast. Which, by the way, is called Nurse United. <laughs> in case you didn't know that, jitterymonkey.com. Yeah, in case you just stumbled on this. Yeah, so um, uh, we kind of talked about it briefly, and I'll probably come one more time next week, and then after that, my and also my son's moving in with me. Um, so. I, that's good news. Yes, that's good. I uh, probably won't be able to come down every week just because it's, well, it's about a 30-minute drive. And I well, I still have to come about 25 minutes, I guess, maybe. It's a jaunt. It's a jaunt. I still have to come, well, when when I'm no longer working from home, I'll still have to come to Belleville to work. But it's going to be one thing to come from work and then... Go, go back and then come go back, back, you know, for recreational purposes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll, maybe you know, like we'll see. We'll see how we'll see how it goes. We'll see how the financially how it is and stuff. And we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. that's what we do. I'm still going to be the co-host, so yeah. Well, Mike, I, I I can't say goodbye. I had to say goodbye to a, a long-running co-host on one of my other podcasts. I, I can't do it again. What? what, what? On five hearts? Five hearts. Okay. Haas uh, left the show last week uh-huh. because he was accepted as a grad student at uh, Nebraska and he has hopes of being a college coach. And he's like, you know, I never really wanted to be a uh, journalist or mm-hmm. podcaster or anything like that. I was just kicking around and doing it for giggles. And well, we had some giggles. Um, so I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, I'll still be. You'll still see me. So. But you know what? We'll There's finish. always the internet. If we get seven more subscribers by next week, we'll complete the 20 subscribers that we will have for starters. Um, what, what happens if they don't get into like after you move and then... You still have to do it. But. Yeah. How will you know? Because you'll do it on video. But. How will you know? Oh, you're going to make me pour it from the bottle? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'll be the guy I'm like, let me see the bottle. Yeah. Plus, I'll, I'll know if you actually take it because you can't fake it. <laughs> you know how Ric Flair used to do shots? Like you, stuff you see in like movies. Apparently, like everybody else is at the bar, at the table doing the shot. And right. Like, oh, uh, yeah. or or putting it in the in the uh, plant next to him. Uh, do you remember the episode of How I Met Your? I think it was How I Met Your Mother, where Marshall had to do shots for Lillian. Because yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> apparently, that's based on a true story. Oh, because the uh, uh, creators of it were like the uh, Ted and Marshall yeah, characters. Yeah, but it was like one of the writers or something. Like that happened to them. 
at like a, 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 a wedding or something like that. I mean, that's fine. I'm yeah. Do what you do. Yeah. All right, should we do the podcast now? We're going to do the audio podcast. And th- thanks for joining us. Stick around because uh, we got some stuff to talk about. Mm-hmm. Jitterymonkey.com. Yes. Go there. <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, he's Mike Luther. I'm Greg Mahachko. Be kind. And rewind. Especially in these times, be kind. And s- still rewind. <laughs> but you should mainly be kind. But if you want to rewind, you can. It's up to you. <laughs> I'm trying to do something. Yeah. Be kind.